All rights reserved. The material and information contained in this program is fully protected by U.S. copyright law and must not be reproduced or copied in any part or in the whole by any means without the express written permission of MyJack Products, Incorporated. Hello and welcome. Your company has made a substantial investment and has purchased the finest rubber-tired mobile gantry crane manufactured today. They have entrusted you to operate this travel lift crane in a safe and efficient manner. The purpose of this program is to acquaint you, the operator, with the MyJack Travel Lift series of cranes and to demonstrate the crane's controls and operating characteristics along with its proper operating procedures. In this program, we'll be using the latest model MJ50 HD Travel Lift crane, the finest rubber tired mobile gantry crane manufactured today. While there are a number of models in the Travel Lift HD series, certain design features or options may vary from one model to the next. However, most operating procedures and principles remain the same. This program deals with typical industrial applications and general operating procedures. The program is not intended to illustrate every operating technique, condition, or situation. Certain operating circumstances may arise, which could not have been anticipated. However, you must be able to respond to them in the correct manner. Specific load handling practices and policies also may vary. All practices must be in accordance with those established by your employer. It is your responsibility to exercise common sense at all times and to address any questions to your supervisor. It is important to understand that operating this machine properly and within its designed capability will lead to greater efficiency, safety, and productivity. We're looking at a MyJack MJ50 HD crane one of a family of travel lift cranes that leads the industry in performance, maneuverability, and versatility. For the travel lift to function as it should, much is required of you. As a crane operator, one of the first things you should realize is the tremendous responsibility that comes with the job. Your safety and the safety of others depends on three factors. Your knowledge of the correct operation of the crane, your skill in being able to operate it properly, and your attitude towards safe and efficient operation. The Travelift crane serves a wide variety of applications in the fields of manufacturing, construction, and intermodal. Therefore, in addition to this program, it is vitally important that you be thoroughly instructed in operating in your particular environment and, whether you are a new or experienced operator, it never hurts to review the basics. We'll start with the general description of the crane. This is a rubber-tired mobile gantry-type crane that straddles the load and is designed for loading and unloading as well as picking up and carrying. The structure is made up of four columns, two front and two rear. The columns are connected by side beams and top beams. The side beams support the engine and hydraulics compartment and operator cab. The top beams are the main load-carrying beams. The hoisting and traverse mechanisms are mounted on the top beams. The trolleys travel or traverse along the top beams from end to end during load handling. The front and rear hoists can be operated independently, as can the front and rear traverse. On most models, the drive and steer wheels are part of the two rear columns and are driven by hydraulic motors through a planetary gearbox chain and sprocket arrangement. Stopping the machine is accomplished by releasing the drive controller. Brakes mounted on the drive motors act as a parking brake. Wheel guards are used to help protect the tires and crane in general, and are not personnel safety devices. The crane must not be operated without these guards in place, since they protect the tire and wheel yoke from damage. The hoist mechanism uses a wire rope and drum arrangement. Each hoist is powered by a direct-drive planetary gearbox. A hoist brake automatically holds the load and prevents it from creeping down while the hoist is not being activated. The front and rear hoist can be operated independently or simultaneously. The chain-driven traverse system moves the trolleys along the top beams, utilizing a parking brake for holding the load while the crane-driven traverse system is not operating. Each individual traverse system is powered by a hydraulic motor, and like the hoist, each one operates independently of the other. The operator's cab is typically located on the left side beam and, depending on the crane's application, can be positioned at various heights and locations. The operator's control area is basically the same for all cabs and is made up of a series of indicator lights, switches, 
joystick controls, gauges, and buttons. You must thoroughly understand each of them before attempting to operate the crane. The crane warning lights come on automatically during the engine startup and remain on until crane shutdown. The travel sound alarm is actuated to alert any personnel in the area that the crane is in motion or about to go into motion. Should these warning systems fail to function properly, the crane must not be operated. As we have demonstrated, the crane is equipped with certain protective and warning systems. However, the primary responsibility for operating the crane safely is in your hands. Your safety and the safety of others in the work area of the machine is a direct result of your correct operation of this machine. Know the location, positions, and functions of all the controls. Make sure you check all controls in a safe, clear area before you work the machine. Make sure you review local laws and regulations. The safety information outlined in the operator's manual does not replace any other safety rules or regulations that may apply in your area. Always review the latest federal and local safety laws and regulations as they apply to your equipment and operation. Make sure that your machine has the correct equipment and is operated in accordance with these safety laws and regulations. Use common sense when operating this equipment. All safety hazards that can possibly arise cannot be foreseen and noted in this video. You must always use common sense and apply the general as well as the specific safety precautions. The American National Standards Institute states, Personnel in the area of the crane are subject to certain hazards that cannot be met by mechanical means, but only by exercise of intelligence, care, and common sense. It is therefore essential to have personnel involved in the use and operation of equipment who are competent, careful, physically and mentally qualified, and trained in the safe operation of equipment and the handling of loads. Although exact qualifications may vary from one employer to the next, there are specific industry standards that must be met. You will find these spelled out in your MyJack Operator's Manual. A copy of the manual should be in the crane at all times. It contains extensive information and technical details regarding your equipment and its operation. It also spells out a number of safety precautions, rules, and regulations to protect you and your equipment. And it's essential that you watch out for your fellow workers. If ground persons are used in conjunction with the operation of this crane, follow the guidelines of your company regarding where the ground crew personnel should be. Based upon the application, yard design, and the safety rules of the company for which those personnel are working when in the vicinity of the crane. MyJack does recommend that all of the ground crew be within sight of the operator before the crane is operated and that they stay in communication with the operator while the crane or any part of it is in motion. If any ground personnel has to move out of the operator's sight, the operator should re-establish communication with all personnel before operating the crane even if the all-clear-for-moving-the-crane signal has been given. All personnel should be clear of the hoisting area before raising or lowering a load. Never lift, lower, or move any person on the spreader, load, attachment, or on any part of the crane not intended for transporting personnel. Always ensure that ground crew never turn their back on the crane, but follow the crane when it is moving. Remember, when working with a ground crew, always know their location and stay constantly aware of potential blind spots. Responsible ground crew personnel should make it a point to wear personal protective equipment as required by their employer. ANSI qualifications for crane operators are printed in the operator's manual. MyJack recommends that operators meet these qualifications and that all ground crew and maintenance personnel be similarly selected to enhance safe operation of the crane. It is recommended that you check your federal or state OSHA requirements for warnings and safety devices relating to your application and operating procedures. Read all safety decals and be particularly aware of the messages earmarked with the safety alert symbol indicated on the equipment and in your operator's manual. Operating in the vicinity of overhead electrical power lines presents an extremely dangerous situation to all personnel in the area of the crane. High voltage can discharge through the crane even without direct contact with the crane itself. It is critical that you observe all safety codes, regulations, and clearances concerning power lines or other power sources as referenced in your operator's manual. 
Remember, safety in most situations means simply using your common sense. When it comes to pre-operational inspection of your equipment, checking and knowing that your equipment is ready before you operate it goes hand in hand with safe and proper use. You cannot assume that equipment is ready to go simply because you are the last person to operate it. It's up to you to be sure that the crane is ready for operation. For example, certain checks must be made, such as the coolant level, the engine crankcase oil level, as well as the hydraulic oil level. If you are personally trained and assigned the responsibility for all pre-operational checks, again, refer to your operator's manual for detailed information and the necessary precautions and procedures. Like an airplane pilot, make it a habit to do a walk-around inspection of your equipment to be sure everything is normal before putting it to work. Look for things such as loose or missing bolts at structural joints. Are there deep cuts in the tires? Do the tires appear properly inflated? Are there any oil leaks? Visually check the alignment of the steer wheels. These are just some examples of checks to be made. You must not operate the crane until all of these inspections are complete and you're sure the crane is cleared to operate. Any abnormal condition must be reported to the appropriate personnel. For example, should a collision or impact occur with the wheel or yoke, the crane must be taken out of service until it can be inspected according to proper procedures. Let's now go over the Travelift HD series operator controls and their use. It's important to remember that the location, purpose, and function of each control, gauge, and switch for the specific model crane you will be operating is detailed in your operator's manual for the proper procedure. Good operating habits should be practiced from the start. Before starting the engine, complete your pre-operational walk-around of the machine. Once you are in the cab, fasten the seat belt if equipped. The cab may be equipped with heat or air conditioning options. The switch on the cab back wall panel switches the electrical voltages from the heater to the air conditioner. Place the switch in the desired position, then adjust the heater or air conditioner to the desired level. The operator controls include two multi-axis joystick controls with multiple functions, an HMI screen for monitoring crane function operation and controlling certain functions, and an instrumentation panel. Your crane may be equipped with the optional radio remote controls. Refer to your operator documentation for details on operating the crane using the radio remote controls. In the cab, the joysticks are used to control drive, steering, trolley, and hoist functions. The functions and options that are equipped are labeled on the base of each joystick. The HMI monitor allows you to monitor and control specific functions and to control the crane top beam, work, and drive lights. The top menu bar contains indicators that are standard, in addition to other indicators for options that may be equipped on the crane. The fault lamp, an e-stop indicator lamp, and the seat switch lamp are standard indicators that will always be present. Also standard are the engine caution lamp and the engine stop lamp, shown on the right-hand side of the top menu bar. Optional indicators that might appear if the crane is equipped with a spreader would be lock, unlock, and land. The fault area of the screen displays information if a fault is currently active. The system area contains the reset button, the spreader motor button if equipped, and the overvoltage reset button. The lights area is used to control the top beam light, the work lights, and the drive lights. The engine area contains information about the engine state and, if equipped, a high RPM button, which is used to increase the engine RPMs to high speed. It should be noted that the engine will continue to operate in low speed range until the engine coolant reaches 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. This area displays the engine speed, the fuel level, the engine oil temperature, and the engine hours. The sink area of the screen displays information about trolley sink and hoist sink if equipped. Switch, state of the switch on the joystick. This lamp is present to let the operator know the current state of the hoist sink or trolley sink switch on the joystick and is illuminated solid green when the switch is active, i.e. pressed, and the hoists and or trolleys are synchronized. Synced. This lamp flashes green when the system is in the process of synchronizing the hoist controls. 
It is illuminated solid green when the hoist controls are synchronized. Equal on. When this button is pressed, the hoists will synchronize and move to equalize. This feature is covered more in depth later in this program where synchronization is discussed in depth.